welcome back to Divinely Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we are here to make Dee Dee's uh, catch all and pin cushion. So, there's a few things that you're going to need today. You are going to need some exterior fabric, you're also going to need some lining fabric. So, you can see there I've got these here, and I'm just using those two fabrics to make it contrasting and um, match all the way around so you're also going to need some shape flex 101 and so if you don't have shape flex 101 you can use any woven cotton interfacing and you're also going to need some um some fusible fleece as well to go onto your exterior you're also going to um, need some cam snaps so you're going to need two sets of those so that means that you need four of the part that looks like a little drawing pin and then you're going to need two female and two male parts you're also going to need some general sewing supplies so some wonder clips your rotary cutter scissors some marking device some thread snips matching thread for your project and you're also going to need a tailor's all so we can uh, put our cam snaps in and you're also going to need uh, some sort of setting tool so some people have bench setting tools or punch ones or these okay these usually come with the the cam snaps and you're also to fill your pin cushion you're going to need either some polyfill or you're going to need some crushed walnuts and crushed walnuts is what i like to use um that way i don't get any um problems with the rice or anything like that now i have created a cutting instructions um pdf for you so you will find that link down below of where to get that that will have all our measurements and sizes on it and also everything that you need to have for this project as well all right so oh and you also need an iron and an ironing pad okay so let's get stuck into it the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set aside our pin cushion and our little strip we're going to attach our fusible fleece to our exterior fabric and our sf 101 or shape flex 101 to our lining fabric now we've got two pieces of each of those and i'll just move some of this stuff out of the way what we need to do is we need to take some little squares out of the bottom of both of these um, exterior and the lining and to do that we just get a ruler and we're going to take a little square out about one and a half inches and we're just going to line that up and I'm just going to mark it so you can see what it looks like. So we're going to cut that little square out and we're going to do the same over this side as well so one and a half inches and you're going to repeat that for both lining pieces and both exterior pieces now if you have directional fabric make sure that you're doing it at the bottom of your fabric as you can see this is not directional it's just got a pattern over it doesn't matter which way it goes but if you have a little puppy dog on there or you've got something that needs to be the right way up you want to have those marks at the bottom of your fabric all right so i'm going to repeat that for the rest of my uh, pieces and then what i will do is i will just using my scissors I will just cut those little squares out so we end up with both our lining and our exterior looking like this okay and then you can just set those pieces aside so repeat that for both um, lining and exterior and we'll come back and start assembling okay so now that we've got that done what you need to do is you need to take your exterior and you're going to place them right sides together lining up your raw edges and we'll grab a couple of wonder clips and just clip these together And just set that aside for a second and then you're going to do exactly the same with your lining fabric as well lining them up all your raw edges and making sure that they're right sides together you're going to grab your pen and just down the bottom we're going to leave a gap about three inches two and a half to three inches so we're going to leave that open then we're going to pop some under clips or some pins whatever you've got a 
so once you've got them clipped together what we're going to do is we're going to head to the sewing machine and on our exterior piece we're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance starting on one side we're going to back stitch at the beginning we're going to go down this side back stitch here do a jump across to here sew a quarter inch seam allowance across here make sure that i back stitch at the beginning and at the end and then the same for this one here and we're going to do exactly the same on our lining piece the only difference is we're going to back stitch here and here to leave this open all right so let's head over to the sewing machine and stitch that down Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all our long threads and then we're going to box up our corners to do that what we need to do is just pop our fingers into that gap and then we're going to nest our seams so making sure that our seam is lining up really nicely and I'm going to get a wonder clip and I'm just going to pop that there and that's going to hold it nicely in place and I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side making sure that our seams are nesting up quite nicely and that our bottom seam is going the same way because we don't want it to be going this way and this one going this way we want it to be sitting nicely okay and pop another wonder clip on there to hold that in place and then we're going to do exactly the same thing with our lining fabric now what we're going to do is we'll head it back over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew straight across here using a quarter inch seam allowance and back stitching at the beginning and at the end and we're going to do that for both the lining and also the exterior okay so now that we've got those uh, sewn together just get rid of all your long threads and now we're going to finish assembling our basket so take our exterior fabric and turn that in the right way pushing out all our corners so once you've got that turned in the right way what we need to do now is we need to sit our exterior into our lining so our lining stays exactly how it is how we've just sewn in the wrong way and then we're going to insert our exterior fabric and we're going to line up our side seams and we'll pop a wonder clip on there and we'll go around to this side and do exactly the same thing making sure that our seam is not twisted so we want it to be going the same way as it is at the bottom so double check that it's very easy to twist it see that it's going and then all I'm going to do is line up my raw edges and I'm going to clip all the way around all right so we've got that clipped all the way around and now what we need to do is starting at a side seam we are going to stitch all the way around and we will back stitch when we get back to where we started okay you want to make sure that all of your raw edges are lining up nicely and we're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance if you've got a sewing machine where your toolbox comes off so you've got a free arm makes it nice and easy because you can just feed that in line up your side seam put the needle in the down position and use a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around okay so now that we've done that what we need to do is just pull through so we'll reach in and grab our exterior and we're just going to pull that through and then what I'll do is I will just fold that in on itself and I'll just pin that closed and then I'll head back over to the sewing machine and I will stitch that down just like so okay all our corners are out okay so once you've got that pinned in place what you're going to do is you're going to head over to the sewing machine and you're just going to stitch an eighth of an inch and you're going to stitch that closed and you want to just start off just a little ways past from where the opening starts And just do a little bit of a back stitch at the beginning and at the end remove your pins and you can see there that that's nice and closed and it's not going to open up on you and can you get rid of all of your threads that don't need to be there then we're going to push that down inside
and you'll probably notice right now that your lining is a little bit bigger than what it needs to be so what I like to do and this is just makes it's just a, a finishing that I like to do on um, my baskets and it's a faux binding um, so basically what I do is I have my lining the same size as my exterior fabric and when I put it in I push it in nice and flat and as you can see we've got about a quarter of an inch all the way around of the lining fabric on the outside so it just gives it that nice little faux binding um, look to it and it just finishes it off nicely and I just roll my fingers so it's sitting nice and flat and then make sure that it's sitting flat on the inside and then I will grab my iron and my ironing pad and I'll just give that a little bit of a press to make sure that it's all staying where it needs to it'll just make it easier when I go to sew that faux binding into place it'll also make your side seam sit a little bit nicer as well okay so once we've done that we'll head back over to the sewing machine and then what you're going to do with the needle in the down position and starting on our side seam we're going to stitch right in that line there where the two fabrics meet and that's going to hold that binding in place now you don't need to do a back stitch right now you do the back stitch when you get back around there so we can just start sewing you might want to lengthen your stitch um, up to a 3.5 I always like to lengthen my stitch a little bit especially when I'm top stitching okay making sure everything is in place and then I will just start to stitch and I'll take it nice and slow and get as close as I can into that seam as possible and you'll have to do a little bit of adjusting as you go so you can see there that I've just stitched all the way along there it doesn't have to be right in that ditch if you get as close as you can if it's a little bit wobbly that's okay too remember it is just a, a catch-all but try and, and get into that groove it just makes it sit a lot nicer so you can see there all right so that is our basket part portion done I'm going to set that aside the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our strip and we're going to place that right sides together We'll just grab a pin and pin that top piece where it's going to remain open and then we're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end and we're just going to stitch all the way down okay on both sides okay so you can see there I've stitched that and now what I'm I've done a jump thread down the bottom so I'll get rid of that so we've got no long threads and then I'm just going to get my fabric scissors and I'm just going to snip off but not on the threads that I've just stitched I'm just going to just take that corner off all right so once we've taken that little bit of a corner off and making sure that we're not gone into our stitching that we've just done we are going to pull this through right sides get your little poking tool and we're just going to push that out make sure that our corners are out okay roll our seams and when I say roll our seams it's where you just get the seam and you just roll it backwards and forwards until it's sitting nice and flush okay making sure our corners are all poked out and then I'm just going to I'll just move this out of the way before I knock it going to grab my iron and the ironing pad we're going to give that a really good press so it's nice and flat and if your corners aren't coming out you can just get your little pin and just give that a little bit of a flick and get it to come out there we go that's out a bit better okay and the other side's okay making sure that that's nice and flat the next thing that we need to do is we need to find the center of our pin cushion and also our little strip so to do that we're just going to fold that in half and just getting your fabric scissors you're just going to take a little bit of a snip off that and what that's going to do is that's going to give you a little V and you're going to do exactly the same thing with the other piece 
you don't want it to be a too big a piece because you've got to make sure that it's caught up in the seam so you just want to take a little snip off it's going to make that one a little bit bigger and then so you can see there we've got a little v taken out of each one and then we're going to do exactly the same thing with our little strip so we've got those notches there and then what we'll do is we'll line those notches up okay and then we'll pop this one on here on top okay with all those notches lining up so i know that everything is centered and i'm just going to get a wonder clip and pop it there for a moment and then i'm just going to open that back up again and i'm just going to flip this up so it's sitting in the center and then bring this back down and then i'll just use my wonder clips to hold that all together and then on one side i'm just going to leave a little opening of about mm, two inches perhaps inch and a half to two inches i'm just going to leave that open because that's where we're going to fill our pin cushion okay so now i've got these wonder clips on there i'm going to head to the sewing machine now and i'm going to start here doing a back stitch i'm going to stitch all the way around till i come back to this top part of the opening and i'll do a back stitch there and then we will clip our corners and turn it in the right way done our quarter inch seam allowance all the way around next we're just going to again we're just going to clip off our corners and take a little bit off each corner without going into our stitching if you should happen to go into your stitching you will have to restitch that again uh, to close that up and just come in a little bit from it so your pin cushion may just be a touch smaller but easily fixed next we're going to go to our opening now this is a little tight okay because we're going to hand close this a little bit later and you're just going to stick your fingers in and grab that tab that we added okay so once you've got that tab and you're just going to pull on that to get it to start coming out and then we'll turn that all through the right way okay so once you've got that turned through the right way just get your poking tool i don't like to use chopsticks or i've got a uh, another tool that i use that is used in scrapbooking that's also good too it's nice and and dull the end of it and it gets right in there i like to use this tool because i find sometimes the little chopsticks that we get in our town tend to um sometimes poke through they're a little bit sharp and i'm a little bit heavy-handed so and then what I do is I just run my tool across the seam and that just straightens that seam up a lot better. And pushes it all out so it's sitting nice and flat. And then at this end I just roll it with my fingers and that helps to get those corners out too at this end. So that's where our opening is. So now that we've got this all sorted, we need to fill it up. All right, so we're ready to now fill up our pin cushion. I'm using crushed walnuts, but you can use polyfill. And I've just got to get a piece of paper to make a little funnel, and then that'll make it nice and easy to go into our little gap. So just using a, a piece of paper, I just then will start pouring that into the funnel. And... Now I'm not using anything else but crushed walnut because I want a little bit of weight to this.
so once you've got that filled up you just want to push your seam in and just pinch that close grab yourself a couple of wonder clips and pop that on and then we can dust this off and move that out of the way all right so you want it to be quite full so it's quite firm but not over full so you can't stitch it so you can see there I've left about quarter of an inch space so once I've sewn that together I can flatten this out a little bit but it's still going to be nice and firm next you want to get yourself uh, some sewing needles and some thread and thread your needle and we're going to double that thread over so you just thread it through one side and bring the end down to the other end you're just going to pop a little knot in that okay and then we're just going to do a quick close that's why we don't want a real big opening and you're going to turn it so your seam is facing this way and then you're just going to go in where that opening is and you're just going to come out about an eighth of an inch from that opening in your seam and you're going to come out in that seam just there and then you'll pull that through and that way your knot's going to be hidden up in here then and hopefully you can see this we're just going to grab a little bit of fabric on this side at the beginning of the opening and then we're going to bring it across to the other side and we're just going to pull that close and then I'm going to go in just near where I came out and out onto the other side and this is just going to close this up and you won't be able to see the stitching okay and then like so so hopefully you can get a good look at that it's a bit hard with the dark thread against the dark fabric but I will link a video up in the top corner where you can see this happening a little bit clearer you can see there you can't see the stitching and it's just disappearing into the seam but it's closing it up nicely and when I use um, crushed walnuts I do like to keep my stitches quite close and again that's another reason why I have a very small opening because there's less chance of rupture all right and then once we get up to our other end we're just going to turn around and we're going to come back the other way and double stitch that as well. Okay. And then I know that this is not going to break open and I try to go between the stitches as well. That um, really helps to really close that up. when I get back to the other end I will actually just go through that seam and come out I'll do a, a little knot there go through once and then I'll go through another time so I've got two in that seam and then I will bury my thread all right so once you've done that you can flatten out your little pillow and you can see there that it's quite solid and then just your pins can go in there like so all right the next stage is to use act to grab our cam snaps and on the end of our tab I'm going to come up about quarter of an inch and come in about quarter of an inch so if you feel there you'll be able to feel your seam and if you just bring it up uh, make a little mark on either side and that's where the point of our little snap is going to go and you want to grab your basket and on the side that you want to put your snaps sort of got to eyeball this to find the center and I'm just going to put some wonder clips in there to hold it in place and what I'm going to do is actually make the both the holes at the same time so if I come in from my side seams that is should be even so I'll just check that so I'll line my ruler up at the edge of this let's bring me up here so to make sure that I'm in the center I'm just going to flatten my basket out now I've just eyeballed that and you can see there I'm just flattening my basket out and so then my side seams are over here and making sure that they're sitting nice and flat and I'm just going to grab my ruler and come in and just make sure that it is even so I've come in about two and a half inches and this one's about the same as well I could probably go over just a little bit that way and I'll measure that again holding 
those wonder clips there okay and you can see it's come down about half an inch I've come down uh, from the faux binding and it's two and a half inches in from the side seam so I've got that there okay so once you've got it in place you're going to grab your tailors all and you're going to line up with that mark that you made and you're going to go through the strip and one side of your basket careful not to stab yourself believe me I've done it enough times to know okay and then we're going to come over to the other side and do exactly the same thing and the reason we're using the snaps is because it just makes it easier to just pop it off and empty it out that way you don't have to take pins and all and you don't stick yourself with your pins all right so now that we've got those holes there you can see i've got the holes here and i've got holes here all right so next what we're going to do is we're going to take two of our caps and then we're going to take either the male or female part doesn't matter and take two those two as well and we're going to attach them to our little pin cushion so to do that we're going to just pop that there like so and have the little prong come through the other side and then we're going to get the male or female part and we're going to pop that on there like so and then we're going to get our tool and we're going to set it so with this particular tool the the flat part here goes into the black bit and then that top bit here goes on this side here and that will crush that center pot um, prong down like so and we're going to do the same on this side and there you go so they're both on there so we can set that aside now and now with our basket we're not going to put them on the outside our disc part where they're going to go on the inside basket so we'll pop that through like so and then get our female or whatever you've got left over and going to line that up and give that a gentle squeeze and then we're going to do the same with our last one pop that on there and give it a gentle squeeze now you don't want to squeeze too hard because you will break it all right and then now all we need to do is attach them so they just snap on like so and that one and there we go our little pin cushion and catch-all is ready to go you can see there it just hangs and to take that off you just pop that off and away you go and empty your little basket and then it just snaps back on as easy as that all right so thank you so much for joining me today i do hope that you enjoyed this tutorial it was just a nice little quick one of a thread catcher you can pop your pins in and have that sitting beside your sewing machine and you can keep all your threads in there so thank you so much for joining me give us a thumbs up down below if you have yet to subscribe please subscribe to the channel and uh, that way you won't miss out on any future posts but that's it from me this week have a great week everybody and i'll see you all again soon bye for now okay.